Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Tiffany, I'm a school psych intern. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite recent, my recent favorite, my recent favorite TV shows. And these are shows that most of them I've kind of discovered over quarantine and I've really enjoyed them as a school psychology student or as someone who studies psychology, someone who's really interested in psychology. I'm a psych major, words are my weapons. And I'm sure people who are not psych students also enjoy these kind of shows and movies but I just felt like they were extra interesting because I was able to like dissect them or like analyze them deeper with my background and knowledge in this field so I hope you guys enjoy and if you haven't seen or heard some of these shows like please go and check it out maybe you'll enjoy it check out like a couple minutes or like the first episode and let me know what you guys think or if you have seen all these or if you have a favorite in my list let me know in the comments below and also let me know what kind of content you would like to see in the future would you like to see more vlogs q a's um specific content about grad school or internship or the field i actually asked on my instagram page and a lot of people have told me they want to see like more like a day in the life or vlog style video so those will be coming out i just need a couple weeks to kind of settle into my role because school is starting tomorrow i want to kind of get into a routine so that my vlog will be sort of organized and interesting instead of me just like figuring out how to use outlook make sure to follow me on instagram at school site tiffany for different resources and school psychology related memes um, and it's also a different way to connect with me on a different platform so go and follow me right there and we will get started that was the longest intro ever so i apologize the first show that i made my husband watch with me <laughs> during quarantine was love on the spectrum and this was suggested by one of my school psych friends this is an australian reality dating show for people on the spectrum they either follow like people on the spectrum that are already together like couples or they follow people who are looking for love looking um, to settle down what do you think love is it would be like a fairy tale a natural high i suppose really interesting i don't want to like give too much away it's very short it's only a few episodes long but you really like get to sense the awkwardness in their interactions and so I loved how raw it seemed and that it just it portrayed people on the spectrum in a different light and they were older and so you also don't see as many people on the spectrum that are older in media it was very refreshing I think it's very educational especially for people who don't know a lot of people with autism like or characteristics about autistic people so definitely go and check it out the second show i want to talk about is it's okay not to be okay and it, this one's a korean drama the korean title is Kintana, which means psycho but it's okay and i guess they kind of changed the american or english title to it's okay to not be okay it, they both fit, I guess. When I first saw the trailer for the show, I was really interested because of the leading actors in the show who are Kim Soo-hyun and Seo Ye-ji. And they are both super attractive and they're very, very talented. And that's what kind of drew me into the show. And I didn't even know what it was about. But it's, it's a very different kind of Korean drama. Usually it's like a lot of rom-com and like very dramatic um, TV. And I mean, this is pretty dramatic, but in a different sense, it's kind of dark dark comedy romance. The drama is about um, Kim soo or Moon gang tae who is a community health worker at a psychiatric ward and so this kind of hit home for me. I got to see all these patients with different mental health disabilities or disorders and also the main character's older brother is disabled and I don't think they ever talk about his disability but um, it seems like he's on the spectrum. The leading female character is a successful children's book author who has never really known what love feels like and throughout the whole show it, it kind of hints that she's like a sociopath or a psychopath. The show unravels their childhood past and their traumas, emotional wounds, and how that kind of impacts who they are in the present time of the show and so I would definitely check it out. Um, it's a little scary, like it's a little dark, but like all in all, I think it's not too bad. Like I'm very bad with like scary movies and scary shows. So I, there were a couple episodes where I needed my puppy to sleep with me in bed. 
<laughs> but all in all, it was not too scary. The third show I want to talk about is called When They See Us. This was also recommended by one of my school psych friends. Thank you. This one had me in tears every episode and it's based off of something that happened in real life. Let's see, let me just read off of this. It's based off the events of the 1989 Central Park jogger case and it explores the lives and families of the five male suspects who are falsely accused, then prosecuted on charges related to the rape and assault of a woman in Central Park in New York City. And this is off of Wikipedia, but it's pretty accurate. Is my mom here? It's just us. You and us. They are all children. I think it was just a really, really good reminder that kids are kids and we actually have to support them in different ways depending on their needs. Please go check it out. I hope it inspires you in the work that you do. And especially if you're going to school psychology or if you're going in to become a teacher or any kind of educator, I hope that it impacts your work and how you see things and how you treat the children that you work with. All right, the next TV series is called Prodigal Son. I loved this show. I watched this a few months back, and so it's not like super fresh off my mind, but this show is an American crime drama television series, and it's about this guy named Malcolm Bright. Hi, I'm Malcolm Bright. I catch killers for a living. It was the third of whose father, Martin Whitley, is the infamous serial killer known as The Surgeon. And so Malcolm Bright is now, like, in the present time of the show, he's a profiler, formerly with the FBI, and he was fired, and then he started consulting with the New York Police Department. The father is like a serial killer, and the son is the profiler, and as a profiler, you have to use, like, tools to get into people's psyche and reading people's nonverbal gestures and language and I just thought it was so interesting. I know it's like fiction and they dramatize a lot of this stuff but I found I still found it like super entertaining. This is the kind of show that I like. I love like crime mystery, like profiling, all of those things because um, you're like trying to read people and figure things out, like solve problems based on the clues that people leave behind and how people answer your questions or how people um, react to you or situations. And so I find that really interesting. I feel like as a school psychologist, we do have to do a lot of problem solving. Like when you're looking at like systems, like school systems, like finding out what the cause of the system problem is. And so I just, yeah, I found it like super um, entertaining and I can't wait for the next season to come out. The next show is called The Umbrella Academy and this one I feel like blew up recently because season two just came out and I didn't even know what it was until recently, like a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, like two weeks ago. My husband and I started watching it and we got hooked and we finished everything in like a few days. So Umbrella Academy is an American superhero web television series based on the comic book series. I have adopted six children. Gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you the Umbrella Academy. So I think because it's based on a comic book, it's very detailed and like storyline is amazing. Um, the cast that they have for the show, I mean, they do an amazing job. It's just like so well done, super interesting. Season one's a little slow, but it kind of gives you like the whole like premise, the background um, for all the characters and what's going on. And season two is a little more fast paced, but they kind of get, get into like time travel. And although like it's like a superhero comic book series, um, it really touches upon like how like they are adults now in the series but how their childhood and like how they were raised how that affected who they were in present day and you know as school psychologists we know how important that is like how you were raised by your parents parenting style attachment theory all of that really impacts who you are and who you become so i found that really interesting and i also find time travel stuff really interesting like i love rick and morty so i would definitely check it out like um there's a couple like big actors in there like ellen page is probably like the most famous one there's also an asian actor in there justin min and you know of course like i'm all for asian representation in media because there's so little of us and um, i would love to see more in the future the next show i want to talk about is avatar the last airbender and if you're 
like around my age, you probably grew up watching it on Nickelodeon. It's kind of like, like a Japanese anime style cartoon, but it's produced by Nickelodeon. I started watching it when I was a child, but I didn't really watch the entire series or I didn't really watch it in order. And once it released on Netflix, um, I got my husband to start watching it with me and I was hooked. I love this show so much. Even though it's an animated series, it has so many deep like tropes, so many deep themes. Yeah. So each of these characters brings so much to the show. They're so multifaceted. Um, they have like different personalities and so much like childhood trauma is related to the show and I really enjoyed it and I would love to watch it again. Um, sometime and there's another series that is sort of related to um, Avatar the Last Airbender it's called Korra and this is like sort of in the future she's like reincarnated um, after Aang died because there's only one avatar at a time and there's four different elements there are like special or specific people who have these powers you can be an airbender a waterbender a firebender or an earthbender the avatar has all four bending abilities and so they are supposed to bring peace to the world and keep the world at peace. <laughs> Korra is a little bit older than Aang. I think she comes off as like a more like annoying and like stuck up character compared to Aang and this is like a completely new series. I do love her character development as well because in the beginning she's like super strong, super know-it-all but like as the series goes on she becomes like a more likable person. She becomes more um, humble and you can see her mature and it's weird because this is an animated series but I feel like I've seen like one of my students like grow up and so I would definitely check out those two series there's like really cute characters characters that like you grow to love and support and like cheer on so I would definitely check those out and the last show I have for you guys is called Kill Me Heal Me this is another Korean drama this released in 2015 so it's been quite some time and you can kind of tell that the style of drama is kind of like old schoolish even though it's only five years old i don't know why like what made me watch it but i heard it, it was about like someone with multiple personality disorder and i was like oh my gosh like i'm interested because i'm a psychology student psych major got your back bro and so i checked it out let me read the synopsis for you. The human body is capable of all sorts of things to survive difficult situations. Cha Doyeon is a third generation business heir who developed dissociative identity disorder, previously known as multiple personality disorder, in the aftermath of several life-threatening traumatic events. While like it does dramatize um, DID, I love that it ties back into his childhood trauma and it kind of explains like where all of his personalities come from and how he can heal from from his traumatic past. He does such a wonderful job of playing these different characters or like these different personalities and it's just it was very enjoyable it was cute. That's it those are a couple of shows that I loved watching as a psychology student. In my psych class I'm learning about this thing called the edible complex all men have to kill their fathers so they can do something to their mothers. I haven't finished the chapter. I hope you guys check it out. If you have watched some of these shows, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more similar content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!